Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and this is my daughter, Jessie Rashi from JessieRashi.com. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, at the end of one of my videos, I asked you if you thought it would be a good idea if we had Jessie over. She's a, a professional oil painter. I thought it'd be really fun if we could get her over and um, try to see if we can get some really nice animal fur colors with latex. It'd be so much less expensive for us. And she agreed. This is really cool. We got so many people who really wanted it. Uh, I'm, I kind of begged her to come and, and she agreed. So this is really cool. <laughs> so Jesse, go ahead. Um, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. <laughs> well, and thanks for having me here. Absolutely. I love everything you do. And um, so this is really exciting to get to collaborate. So in preparation for this, I went to Lowe's and I got four sample sizes of paint. And if you are interested in a more comprehensive color mixing tutorial, I do have those. But for this, I wanted to make it super straightforward, the least number of paints to paint a nice brown fur. And so the primary color here is sweet cardamom. <laughs> uh, so the primary color here is sweet cardamom. I was just looking for a medium value, not too light, not too dark, orangey brown. And so I get three other colors to go with that. The first one is this blue color, which will just tame the brown and make it more neutral without making it lighter or darker. And this one's called Newport Gray. The next one was a really dark color in case I just want to make it a lot darker and it's called Tuxedo. And the last color is Dusky Morn. So this is a really light color and um, I didn't think I needed a pure white and I thought that might actually make it more challenging to work with a pure white. So, so now I'm going to do some testing to see what the range of colors that these four colors can make. This is the primary color, this orangey brown. It's sort of a, it's sort of a stucco color. It's really lovely. I am a huge fan of color in general. I'm actually just gonna put a bunch of this right across the top of this little canvas panel that Jenny gave me. And so this is one of the things that is really helpful to do uh, before you start painting anything is just figure out what colors you have and how they play together. This is this gorgeous uh, deep grayish teal. I'm just going to mix some of my brown with some of the blue and see what happens. So this is a very cool gray, kind of a medium color. I'll leave that right there. Clean off my brush a little bit and try the next color. So this is the light gray, sort of a warm gray. It looks really nice, like I could see painting <laughs> the walls this color. That's it's really pretty. So it's super important when you're testing out your colors to use a clean palette knife and a clean paintbrush. Otherwise, you're not really finding out what that particular color does. And I want to see what happens when I make my blue-gray lighter and then also what happens when I make it darker. So orange and blue together have all three of the primary colors in them. Two of them are in the orange and one of them is in the blue. And so together they make a gray. And so that's the primary principle I'm working with here. And so I'm gonna take some of this brown and mix it with this light lightning color, the light gray. Let's see what kind of color that is. And so one thing I'm finding here is that the light gray color is just a lot stronger. It probably has a lot more pigment in it than the brown does. 
And so it's taking a lot more of the brown to mix in there. And the same thing happened over here with the blue. So I'm thinking that this brown color is just a little bit more transparent than at least the, the whitish color and the blue color. Okay. So here I am mixing some of the brown, some of the blue, some of the white, all three of them together. So I'm grabbing a little bit more of that brown and a little bit more of the blue. I just wanna see what the range is that I can do with these three colors. Okay, so that's a really nice neutral color here. And lastly, get this dark gray. It's kind of a charcoalish gray here. I think one of the most wonderful things about working with only two or three or four colors is that you can fairly quickly learn everything there is to know about that color. And if I had 30 colors out here, it might be really easy to grab the exact color, which is fine, there's no shame in that. But it would be really hard to know what do all 30 of these paints do when they're interacting with each other. Okay, so I'm gonna pull down a little bit of this orange, add some of this dark color to it and see what happens. Oh, that's very neutral and almost a little bit warmer than that. It looks so drastically different than the brown with the blue. Okay, and then I want to see what happens with the brown. I need more brown out here. Don't want to skimp on your paint when you're doing tests. So let's see what happens with the brown and the dark color and the blue and the white. This is like what happens with all of my various colors. So I've got this lovely neutral color here. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of the lightest color over here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That looks like the gray of a gray wolf, doesn't it? It does. That's nice. Isn't that a wonderful gray? Yum, 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 yum. Wow. And, okay, and then over here, I'm gonna see what happens with this brown and the dark and the light and add in a little bit of the blue. So this is just an everything pile. I know that blue is very strong from my experience over here, so I'm just going to add it in a little bit at a time and see what happens. So you can see a little bit of a difference here. Look at the values, to the how dark it is to be a little bit similar, so we can really see the difference in color. Whoop. Are there any animals that have this kind mm -hmm. of bluish? Mm -hmm. Like what? I love that color. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah. So this dark color I got is a little bit on the purpley side. I thought that would be a nice way to kind of even out my range of colors. Now I'm wondering, uh, someone mentioned that you could add acrylic paint to tint latex paint. Do you have any idea if that actually would work or not? I, um, that's my understanding also. I would think so. I have read that latex paint really is acrylic but they just call it latex for some reason. I think they probably do that because yeah. it, yeah. it uh, would make acrylic paint seem much more expensive. They <laughs> 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 both have the same name. Yeah, they must be why. Yeah. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind, you probably have experienced this, but when you mix with a paintbrush, you tend to mix less than if you mix with a palette knife. And it's just this weird thing that happens to absolutely everybody. So if you're trying to mix a big pile of paint, it's nice to use a stick or a palette knife or something hard. We've got the brown. I'm gonna add in some of this red. So the other thing to keep in mind is that these paints will darken as they dry. So you want to let your test dry completely before you start painting something that you care about. Um, 
and they darken different amounts depending on what you do to them. So if I whip the paint while I'm mixing it up, I'm adding all this air to the paint and as it dries that leaves and gets way darker. And if I mix in a lot of water that will evaporate and then same thing happens. And so one thing I'd love to show you is how to read the ingredients of your acrylic paint to know what's going to happen when you start mixing it. They put the ingredients on the paint. So you can see this tiny little writing down here. It says what the pigments are. And with yellows, about half the time in my experience, white is one of the pigments. So if you're trying to darken something up, read your ingredients and see if white's in there because that won't help. Um, this, is, this did make a really interesting uh, color. It certainly did mix up. Yeah. And so when I got colors, I was in, I was not trying to get a full spectrum. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get only the colors that the simplest way to make the colors in that mm -hmm. particular photo. Sure. So I feel like I understand pretty much the full range of what those colors can do. And there's one more test I wanted to do, which is that your sculptures sometimes have um, this brown paper on them mm -hmm. that already is lending itself some, co some colors. And I just want to see what will happen. Oh, you mean painting right on top of the brown paper? I do. What a cool idea. So exciting. Okay, I was so excited. So I'm thinking this will be a great time to use this little brush that just does these sort of hair things and let some of this brown paper show right through. So this is, this is a grainer brush that you use when you painted our cow, isn't it? It is. That was so cool. A lot of people yeah. went and got one of those right after you showed us how to do that. <laughs> I well, I hope they're enjoying it. I sure am. I love mine. So I'm just going to see what happens when we've got this brown lines. And when you put it on the sculpture, then it's a little bit smoother. Um, so my paper is a little wrinkled, but that's okay. Because um, this will be similar to what's happening when we go over bends and things like that. So super fun. So this is interesting because right now before it dries, it looks like it's the same darkness as the paper but a little bit of a different color so that's fun and then just the dark by itself for um the darker fur i'm going for i'm gonna overlap that a little bit that seems like it'll be really interesting let's see what happens where we're trying to show less of the paper and then more of the paper and here I'll let the less paper um, kind of surround the area with more paper so we can really see what that paper is lending here i've got the brown color and the dark and light colors and just seeing how that plays with everything and everything's still wet so that's nice it's all really smearing together <laughs> and I, I think that's that's very nice and last test is with just a hint of the blue you can see it looks way bluer mm -hmm. than yeah. but it still feels gray so that's neat the only other thing I'm going to really want to do is a warm, neutral color. So I'm going to start mixing with the lightest color. And to warm it up, I'm adding just a touch of the orange. Um, and the light color is already a gray, so it, it's starting off neutral, and then I'm getting it warmer and warmer as I add more orange. There we go. Let's see how that plays with everything else. And oh, I like that. I think that's going to work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I can 
when I make my mousse, I can I can use all of those colors and the brown. Yeah. Yay. Absolutely. That looks really cool. And so here I'm just getting a little bit darker. Same three colors, but less of the lightest one. And so if you don't like any of the colors, you just paint right over it. And then that old color, it's adding character. Mm -hmm. And so every brush stroke you put on there, even if you don't like it as an end, it's really helpful as adding character and kind of like layering the yeah oh that's pretty yeah so mm -hmm. I wanted to see what would happen with um, these marks next to where the paper is showing through mm -hmm. and cool I think that's all of the experimenting what do you think are we missing anything no I think this is gonna be fun this is gonna get us a really good start okay so most important thing here, put the brushes in the water before you move on. Um, you don't necessarily want to just leave your brushes in there because then the the glue, because then the glue and the ferrule can kind of um, loosen up. But it's so much better to leave your brush in the water than it is to let it dry up. So Jesse, I haven't actually been to the hardware store for a while. I'm, I've been kind of stuck here in my little town. Don't drive on the snow. But um, I haven't ever checked to see how much these little sample things cost. Is this less expensive than acrylic paint? Well, sort of. So um, these guys were $5.98 a piece for the sample size. If I was, if I wanted something much bigger, um, the price per ounce goes down. Sure. Um, for acrylic paint, it's actually less expensive to get this quantity of student grade paint, but it's a nightmare to use. Like I do not recommend it for anybody. The way that the colors mix together is unpredictable. You're better off spending a little bit more and getting the latex. But if you wanted um, artist grade, acrylic paint it costs I don't know three or four times as much as this it's wonderful to use if that's in your budget but like I said it's like three or four times as much yeah so this, sure. this is really a cool idea this is wonderful yeah. I, I thought this worked really well the fact that it's so fluid is it, I'm really excited about it. and I'm going to be using the same colors the way she mixed them up uh, to go ahead and paint the mousse pattern that I just finished and now that she's pointed out that I can actually use the, the brown paper, I'm not even going to put gesso on it or anything. I'm, I'm really excited about that. That's in the next video. It'll be coming up. And tell us again how we can learn more about colors. Where do we go? So I'm planning to make very soon a quick primer on understanding mixing paint. So it'll just be short and sweet for people really interested in color theory and if you want to be able to mix the whole spectrum, you know, what are the five colors that you should get? And then for people that are really interested in diving much deeper into it, I do have workshops that are really all about color. And you can tell I'm a huge fan of color. Yes. I love it. Excellent. So we can find those on your YouTube channel? You will soon. Yeah. Or uh, can we also find those on your website? Absolutely. And where do we go to find oh, your website? Uh, JessieRashi.com. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jessie. Yeah. So now go make something and then come back and visit us. UltimatePaperMache.com and JessieRashi.com. We'll see you there. Thank you.